What's up teachers? It's Nickel here and we're going to look at how grading works using the ski slope model. To begin with, let's just remember that each ski slope level is related to a depth of knowledge slice of pie. And as students go from the green circle to the blue square, from the blue square to the black diamond, and from the bl black diamond to the double black diamond, they're gaining depth of knowledge along the way. And so therefore, their grade should also chart that trajectory. If you're using standards-based grading, it works really nicely that the grades actually kind of align with the different ski slope levels. And true to form, I give students a four that are able to accomplish the double black diamond tasks. Um, I give a three to the students that meet the expectations as it calls for in the rubric. A three is just a proficient or meeting expectations type of grade. Partially proficient is a two and insufficient evidence is typically gonna be a one. Yet, if students have actually completed the green circle, I think that it does show that they've got some start on the work. And so therefore, I typically give students a 1.5 if they've completed the green circle. Yet, it's also a way that you can leverage your classroom as a teacher. And perhaps you wanna make sure that students know that they're unable to pass without going beyond the green circle. So this is a place that there's a lot of fluidity and you can definitely change this up as you see fit for your classroom. And if you're using traditional grading, then perhaps your grades could be something like a D plus to a C minus would be earned if students just completed the green circle. Yet, if they went further and did the blue square, then their overall progress in the unit, their assignment grade would be something like a C to a B minus. If students went further, then they could earn a B to an A minus if they completed the black diamond and then those advanced grades, the A to the A plus, would be awarded to students that completed the DOK level four, the most advanced um, display of information or understanding in the unit. So when I'm organizing these um, assignments on Google Classroom, the assignments are going to be the things that I'm actually providing this overall grade to. So the assignments are going to be the tasks that are in the green circle, blue square, black diamond, and double black diamond playlists. The assessments will come at the end or at the checkpoints. So there can be an assessment at the end of each checkpoint, at the end of each um, ski slope level, and then also at the end of the unit. So since those are designed to test what the students have actually understood and it's their chance to display their understanding, assessments are given a weight in my classroom of 60%, and assignments are the things that they use to practice, and so those are given away of 40% in my classroom. Now, as I said before, I start the year off with a 50% and 50% um, weighted grade for this to help provide some emphasis that it's really important that students not only attempt to answer the assessment questions, but they also complete the assignments. Now, since I create my own assessments, I also make sure that the assessments are truly assessing the aspects of um, depth of knowledge related to what students would engage with within the black diamond. So since the assignments and assessments have different weights and they have different expectations of the students, the scoring is going to be a little bit different and also the number of revisions will be different as well because of the frequency in which students will see these assignments. So for the actual assignments here, the practice work that students are completing, since this is a mastery learning model, students earn either a satisfactory or an unsatisfactory grade for each assignment. Now, students are unable to move on if they have an unsatisfactory grade or a missing. Therefore, students must revise their work before they can move on to the next assignment. So there are unlimited revisions here on assignments. Now I say unlimited, but as a teacher, I really try to make sure that I'm providing purposeful feedback so students can make revisions in an efficient manner. It helps me out and it helps them out too. And so when it gets out of control or if students, for example, are just attempting too many times and not grasping it, that's a good indicator that it's time for a one-on-one -on -one situation of um, teaching the student maybe where they're mis or addressing their misconceptions or teaching them the concept in a more personalized manner. So in order to communicate this using Google Classroom, I typically just, I tell students that if they get a two out of four, that's the equivalent of an unsatisfactory grade. If they get a four out of four, then that's equivalent of a satisfactory grade, meaning they did what they needed to do. 
Now, they continually revise until they earn that satisfactory grade, and then they move on to the next assignment, so on and so forth. So therefore, the frequency here of assignments is regular. Assessments are not going to happen very often. Okay, Like I said before, they're going to happen at the checkpoints. So those checkpoints are the green circle and the blue square checkpoints. And then also at the end of the black diamond, because that'll be the end of the unit. So it'll be an end of a unit assessment, and then maybe some little pop quizzes or uh, vocab quizzes, something along that those lines, um, or displaying those early skills at the checkpoints of the green circle and the blue square. Now, since it, it's an assessment, I provide students with one revision opportunity, and the scoring is going to be based on what your scoring is at your school, whether it's going to be standards-based grading, or if it's just going to be, we'll call it the typical grading scale, A to D plus, or a 1 to a 4. So those assessments are graded directly using the method of um, grading in your school, whereas the assignments are not necessarily graded one by one using the typical grading method. Because since it's a mastery model, we need to show how far the students progress in this depth of knowledge. So what that looks like then is as students complete the first playlist in the green circle. We'll say that students here, I've got four different student profiles. And as I draw the assignment, as I draw the letters here, the S's, we'll say that that's when the students are completing the work. So as students complete the work, for example, the smiley face student here just completed the green circle. Now, if it's not the green circle checkpoint, I want to give that student some recognition, letting them know, hey, great job completing the green circle. You're on track. You're meeting the expectation. So I'm going to provide you with a three because a three means that you're proficient and you're meeting the expectations. Now, this grade will change as the unit continues on, but it's a good communicator along the way. Now, the spectacle student here has two of the three assignments done, not the third one yet, and the sunglasses student just has the first one completed. And we'll say that this last student is sick and there's nothing coming in yet. They're not even at school. So the spectacle student maybe gets that last assignment done and then boom, the checkpoint happens. Now, as I said before, I send an email to any student who did not meet the expectations in the class of that checkpoint. So I would just send an email to the sunglasses parents and to the student who is sick. Now, this is a great way to open up the communication with parents and to just let the students know that stuff, stuff is still continuing in the classroom and that they have an opportunity to engage with it. Um, and so what I do is I send out just a really, um, a really basic email that's a template that just says your student is missing one or two assignments in class and they have until the end of the week to turn those in. So I let them know what the, what the uh, situation is and what they can do to continue with a simple communication to parents and to the student. After the green circle checkpoint, we'll continue on. But in order to let students kind of know where they're at right now in the moment, I would tell the spectacle student that they have a three. At the checkpoint, I would enter these grades. The sunglasses student only did one of the three assignments. Now, that's not very um, telling of what they've done or what they know, and so they have not yet really shown me that they have any basic skills in this topic. Therefore, I would give this student a one because they've gotten something done, yet they're not really on track. And then the final student who is sick, this student would earn that insufficient evidence because they haven't been able to demonstrate anything up to this point. After the green circle checkpoint, students should be working on those blue square assignments. And we'll say the smiley face student is continuing on. The spectacle student is continuing on and maybe even begins the black diamond. The sunglasses student is still behind at this point, so I would make sure that I touch base with the student, maybe provide some one-on-one -on -one instruction to help them get through that green circle and get them into the blue square assignments. Now, if the blue square checkpoint hits now at this point, I would then go into the gradebook and update the grades to let students know where they're at. It's also nice to update the grades of the students that are meeting the benchmarks, and maybe even if they go beyond. So right now, if I were to update the gradebook and let students know, where they are in terms of the progress over compared to the amount of time that they've had, the smiley face student is right on track because we're at the blue square checkpoint. They are meeting the expectations. The spectacle student is actually going ahead of schedule. So therefore, I'm going to give them a little um, boost here to let them know, hey, good job. You're on track. You're actually ahead of the pace. Um, another way you could do this is just say that they're meeting the expectation because they've met that checkpoint. The sunglasses student is not quite done with the blue square yet. 
So they don't earn the three because they're not meeting the expectation, but they're really close. So I would give this student a 2.5 to let them know you're close to meeting the expectation, but you're not there yet. And again, the student who is out sick would end up with the insufficient evidence. So the assignments continue on and the students get working. The spectacle student goes all the way to the double black diamond before the checkpoint. The sunglasses student comes on in and actually gets done with the black diamond just in time. And the student who is sick actually comes back to school and gets some of the work completed. Now, let's say that it was now the end of the unit. In order to be able to um, update the gradebook, it's important to let students know that they missed out on some opportunities, so providing zeros for any work that did not get completed. This can also help average out the gradebook if you're using an auto average type of system. Otherwise, you could leave these blank if you're automatically or manually entering, if you're manually entering the student's grade based on the number of assignments that they completed. And it's not just the number of assignments that they completed, but it's that they completed this, the assignments in the right order. If a student were to skip an assignment, I would make sure that I would go back, touch base with that student, let them know that they missed an assignment. And this is where our duties start to lie as a teacher, is keeping track of where students are so that you can help support them in the process so that they don't miss something along the way. So if we were to look at this smiley face student, they made it through most of the black diamond, so they almost earned a full three, but this student now ended up with a 2.5, maybe a 2.75, because they got through almost everything. The spectacle student made it all the way to the double black diamond, so I would provide a score of a four for them because they earned it by doing that exemplary task or that extended thinking type of task. The student with the sunglasses made it all the way through the black diamond, so they would earn a score of a three. And the student who was out sick but came back did get some work done. Um, and maybe they were only there for a couple days. So this is where you have some openness as a teacher. You can obviously um, adapt your grading as you see fit. If a student were just to complete two of the three tasks for a green circle, I would give that student a score of a one because they are still providing basically insufficient evidence, but at least the one shows that they got something completed. So that's a, just a quick overview, and I hope that it provides some insight into how the grading process works, where assignments are grading the progress that students make, and the assessments are obviously assessing the understanding um, that the students are gaining along the way. That's all for now. I'll see you on the next